TV KPM. Assalamualaikum, salam sejahtera kepada semua yang menonton Road to Success SPM 2021 bersama saya Nisa Kis. Selamat Hari Raya. Nisa ucapkan kepada semua yang menonton dalam pada kita meriah beraya ni pun tidak lupa untuk kita tetap mengulang kaji bagi calon-calon SPM 2021. Khususnya, baiklah sebelum itu Nisa nak bacakan kad ucapan Bukan kad ucapan raya tapi kad ucapan selamat hari guru bersempena dengan kempen hashtag Terima kasih cikgu di mana hari guru tidak akan tidak akan pula akan tiba tidak lama lagi Di mana di sini kad ucapan ini dikirim oleh adik Muhammad Jazri bin Muhammad Yusni dari SK Kemahang Dua cantik dan meriah kad ucapannya di mana di sini Adik Jazri ada tuliskan guruku saat aku mengenal aksara Kau ajari aku menghitung angka saat aku mengerti bahasa Kau ajari aku logika. Terima kasih. Hashtag terima kasih. Cikgu, terima kasih adik Jazri kerana mengirimkan kad ucapan yang sangat cantik ini. Baiklah, hari ini kita akan mengulang kaji satu lagi topik tingkatan empat untuk calon-calon SPM 2021 kita di bawah subjek sains. Siapa agaknya guru yang akan bersama-sama beraya dengan kita di studio ini? Jom kita saksikan profil beliau. Jom semua kita persilakan Cikgu Sohana dari SMK Convent Kelang. Apa khabar Cikgu Sohana? Baik, Selamat Hari Raya. Selamat Hari Raya. Kita berlari di sini je lah hari ini ya, Cikgu. Ya, betul. Ya. Baiklah. Tak apa saya ada kuih raya. Mm-hmm. Tapi sebelum betulkan Cikgu, saya nak tanya hari ini topik kita sains tingkatan 4 merupakan uh, topik ulang kaji bagi murid-murid kita hari ini kan Cikgu? Betul. Ya. Sebelum tu Cikgu, saya nak jemput Cikgu ke meja ini. Saya nak tunjukkan kepada mereka semua apabila kita berada dalam situasi yang selamat, penjarakan sosial dan sebagainya. Jangan lupa, silakan Cikgu. Apabila perlu membuka pelitup muka anda, jangan lupa simpan di tempat ataupun di dalam bekas yang bersih. Contoh macam saya ada bekas macam ni. Ah cikgu, ada bekas yang macam mana tu cikgu? Macam ni. Ah cikgu ada bekas yang kecil yang boleh dilipat dan sebagainya. Okay. Saya nak ingatkan juga kepada anda semua agar kekal menjaga SOP di mana sahaja <coughs> kita berada seperti memakai pelitup muka, menjaga penjarakan fizikal sekurang-kurangnya 1 meter, cuci tangan menggunakan air dan sabun dan <coughs> lazimkan untuk sanitasi tangan anda. Baiklah cikgu Mungkin Cikgu Sohana boleh kongsikan serba sedikit dengan penonton kita berkenaan subjek ataupun topik apa yang kita nak ulang kaji pada hari ini, Cikgu. Baik. Um, sains tambahan ialah satu topik gabungan fizik, uh, kimia, uh-huh. biologi. Okay, satu topik yang uh, di dalam sains uh, tulen, yang terangkum di dalam sains tulen. Uh, tetapi ianya lebih mudah dan ia uh, lebih mudah difahami dan topik dia tidak berapa panjang. Uh-huh. Uh, jadi uh, sesuai untuk dipelajari oleh uh, murid-murid yang berminat dalam um, untuk membuat perubatan. Yeah. Okey, tetapi uh, tidak uh, bukan uh, ke arah uh, doktor tetapi boleh kepada kejururawatan uh-huh. uh, uh, dan juga fisioterapi dan Baik. sebagainya. Hmm. Baik, cikgu. Saya kira murid-murid di rumah pun sudah tak sabar-sabar. Saya persilakan cikgu dulu untuk kita sanitasi tangan kita. Silakan Baik, cikgu. Terima kasih. Aha, sebelum kita mulakan dan sementara itu saya ada video khas yang ingin saya kongsikan kepada kita semua. Jom kita saksikan video ini. Hi everyone, I'm Lee Shi from SMK Common Clan. In my opinion, I think additional science is a very interesting subject. By learning these subjects, we can learn a lot of about living things and how it interacts with the non-living things around them. Our teacher encourages us to gain knowledge through experience and exploration. I learned that studying is hard, but learning is fun. If we relate our studies to our daily life, science will be so much fun. I hope I will gain more knowledge on the things around me and how it works through additional science. That's all for me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Siti. To me, ad science is a very interesting subject. I especially loved learning about a dynamic ecosystem. I learned that there are five components inside an ecosystem consisting of a habitat, a niche, a population, a species, and a community. Other than that, I really love to learn about symbiosis. I hope in the future I'll be able to learn much more through art science. Hi, hey, my name is Sophia, and I'm from 4 SK1. My feeling for art science, art science is an interesting subject, exciting and fun. My hope for art science, I hope everyone can pass in art science and. 
and I hope everyone can tell that science is going to be interesting subject. As far as science is the best. Bye, that's all from me. Okey, baiklah itu dia sedikit sebanyak pendapat rakan-rakan kita berkaitan subjek ini dan subjek ini diajar di dalam bahasa Inggeris di sekolah. Jadi along the way I will be speaking English juga dengan Cikgu Suhana dan juga rakan-rakan ni akan bersama dengan kita. Ya, yeah, saya tidak usah orangan. Mestilah kita nak ada tetamu untuk sama-sama menjamah kuih raya dan ulang kaji pelajaran dalam pada masa yang sama. Jom kita persilakan rakan-rakan kita dari SMK Convent Kelang. Hai semua. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi pula ada hai salam sejahtera semua. Apa khabar? Selamat hari raya. Wah, cantik-cantiklah baju raya kawan-kawan kita semua. Okey, baiklah kita akan berkenalan dengan rakan-rakan kita. Kita persilakan a uh, Savina perkenalkan diri anda. Silakan Savina. Hai so, hai Esta. Teman saya Selvina Durga, anak perempuan setia di SMK Common Plan. Thank you. Thank you, Selvina. Seterusnya, Renusha. Renusha, jangan lupa uh, turn on your microphone. Ada. Okey, silakan Renusha. Okey. Baik mungkin ada sedikit uh, masalah akses internet di situ. Tak mengapa kita teruskan dengan rakan kita Marsha Idina. Assalamualaikum and hi. Nama saya Marsha Idina binti Solidin. Saya dari SMT Konven Kelang. Selamat pagi. Alright, thank you. Kasdina, your turn. Hai, Assalamualaikum. Uh, saya Kasdina Syafia dari SMP Kauwe Class. Selamat kenalan. Selamat kenalan. Next, we have Nurul Hanani. Sila perkenalkan diri anda. Hai, Assalamualaikum. Nama saya Nurul Hanani dari SMP Kauwe Class. Selamat berkenalan. Selamat kenalan. Dan kita ada Abi Rami. Sila perkenalkan diri anda. Good day everyone. Hi, my name is Abirami and I'm from Subramaniam. All right. So I guess our friends are all ready. If you guys are ready, can you guys give me double thumbs up? Yes, everyone seems so ready and I hope our friends at home also uh, bersedia dengan pelajaran kita uh, sebentar lagi. Kita akan beri tindak seketika. Jangan ke mana-mana. Kita jumpa selepas ini. Assalamualaikum and a very good day everyone. I'm Hanani's mother. Hanani just recently joined the additional science class. And in my opinion, additional science is a very useful and a very good subject. It does not only teach you normal science. It also contains physics, chemistry and bio, which will help you in your life in the future. So I really hope that Hanani will build up her interest in the subject and do well in the subject. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Sugashini, Abirami's mother. I always encourage my daughter to take additional science simply because it makes a unique difference in a child's life. As in solving complex problems, developing creativity through investigation and making wise decision in their daily lives. As such, I believe it is vital for additional science subject to be part of the school curriculum. Thank you.
You guys are still watching Road to Success SPM 2021 with Minisa and Cikgu Sohana and also our friends from SMK Convent Klang. Today's subject is uh, additional science where we will be studying a little bit about uh, Form 4 Chapter 2. Right, teacher. Okay, teacher. Let's proceed with our lesson. All right, students, while you are enjoying your Hari Raya goodies, we will continue with our topic today, which is the dynamic ecosystem. <clears throat> All right, you can turn into, uh, to your uh, page 20, 22 in your textbook. All right, so I will give you the definition of the ecosystem. Ecosystem is uh, several communities living and interacting with each other together with non-living components of the environment. Example, animals, plants, the pH value, soil, the sun, water and air make up the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Now we can see that in this ecosystem, living things okay, yes. interact with non-living things mm. all right that is uh, ecosystem next all right look at habitat okay a natural environment where an organism lives that mm. meet their basic needs such as food shelter and safety okay so our example is a tropical rainforest another one is the niche which is the role and activities of an organism in an ecosystem. Example, red hornbills fly to find the food. So for this term niche, let's focus on the term activities. Mm -hmm. Okay, now can anyone give me another example of the niche? Hanani? Um, elephant. Elephant, what elephant. does it do? Activity? And hunt for food. Elephant hunt for food? For food. Elephants hunt for food. Or you yes. say elef elephant eat plants? Uh, yes, eat plants. They eat, eat plants. plants. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, Anani. All right, next. Okay, let's look at community. Look, the scale is getting smaller. Now, community, several animals and plant populations living and interacting with each other. Now, again, red hornbill population living together with a population of monkeys, snakes, and as well as other animals. Okay, we can see that a few populations of animals, they live in a community. Mm -hmm. All right, after that, population a group of organisms from the same species okay living and breeding in the same area okay example a group of red hornbills living in a tropical rainforest all right i want to ask one question abirami okay where can we find a huge population of hornbill in malaysia which state which state Abirami, can you turn on your mic, please, dear? Um, you can maybe in Johor. Hornbills, I Hornbills, hornbills. hornbills. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to try? Mm. How about um, Selvina? Who wants to help Abirami to answer this? Where can we find... Uh, Where can we find hornbills? Biggest population of hornbills in mm -hmm. Malaysia. Which in Malaysia. State? Selvina, do you want to try? Um, is that in Sarawak? In Sarawak. In Sarawak. Very good. good. Okay, oh, next. Okay. The smallest scale, each, which is the species, mm -hmm. a group of organisms that look alike and share common, common characteristics. These organisms are capable of breeding to produce offspring. So, example, hornbills. Now, common characteristics in hornbills, mm -hmm. you can see that they have huge beaks and their colours, the one that we have in Malaysia, is black and white. All right, moving on. Now, let's study biotic and abiotic components. Now, these are the components that will affect our ecosystem. First, let's look at abiotic components. They are the non-living factors in an ecosystem. All right, example, temperature. Organisms can only live within a specific range of temperature. Look at this 
group of polar bear and focus on this term specific range of temperature okay so can we have our can we put polar bears in our tropical rainforest kasdina can they live in our rainforest no no mm -hmm. why look at this because they can only live in uh, in a low temperature place. Mm. Okay, all right, a specific range of temperature. If we force them to live here in Malaysia, they will definitely die. Yes. Okay, next. Another factor, another abiotic factor is the pH value. pH value of water or soil in a certain habitat influences the distribution of living organisms. Mm -hmm. Most organisms survive well in a neutral condition, pH 7. But some species, okay, such as the palm tree, they are suitable, they require, they love the alkaline soil, which is more than pH 7. Mm. Okay, moving on. Now, another factor, light intensity. The intensity of light affects the distribution and growth of plants. Look, the word intensity, it means the light can be very bright or it can be very low. Mm -hmm. Okay, some species, they can live in an area with lot of sunlight. Mm. Some of them, they don't like sunlight so much. Mm. They love to hide below um, mm. uh, the trees or the shrubs. Beneath the shadows. Yes. Mm. The variation of light intensity in mm. a forest leads to a difference in plant growth. When you look at this picture, you can see that taller trees, okay, Taller uh, species, they will grow very high because mm. they love the sunlight. Mm. But uh, plants, shrubs such as moss, mm. okay, they love where they don't like sunlight so much. Mm. So they are always at the bottom canopy of mm. the forest. Okay. Next one, humidity. Now it refers to the amount of water vapor in the air. <clears throat> water vapor. Okay and it affects the rate of water loss from animals through dehydration and plants through transpiration. Mm -hmm. Now, who loves, which animal loves to live in this kind of environment with so much of water vapor in the air? They are, one of them is the snakes mm -hmm. and the frogs. frogs. Now, students, what type of insect that love humid places? All right, who's turn now? Marsha, what Marcia, do you think? Can you share with us? What do you think? Which type of insects? Mm. Is it flies? Flies. How about termites? You know termites? Yes. Ah, that, mm. the, the one that, that uh, consumes um, wood, mm -hmm. dead wood. <clears throat> the wood is always very soggy. Mm. It means that it has got some soil and water vapor mm -hmm. okay, over there. All right, next. <clears throat> Microclimate. All right, the climate in a microhabitat <clears throat> it involves the combined effects of wind, humidity, temperature, and light intensity. The microclimate in moist soil is suitable for worms. In the soil, in the soil, is there a lot of light or very little light. What do you think? Very little to almost no light. Teacher. Almost no light yeah. at all. So that's why worm, we can find a lot of them in the soil. Mm -hmm. And it is also very moist. Mm -hmm. uh, they love this kind of uh, climate, microclimate. Okay, next one. The abiotic factor is topography, the physical and features such as the altitude, slope, gradient and aspect of a region. Okay, and the higher the altitude, the lower the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure and temperature. Okay, now pine trees can be found growing on thin soils and slopes. Now, can we grow pine trees in our backyard? No. Can we grow pine trees in our school field? I wish, teacher. No, you wish. It's very shady, isn't yes. it? Very nice looking trees, but they need lower temperature. Temperature and low atmospheric pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we cannot have them around here. Okay, 
Next, just now we were talking about non-living factors. Now, mm -hmm. how about the living factors that affects the organism around them? Now, let's look at the okay producers. Autotroph, okay, example autotroph organisms that synthesize organic substance, synthesize organic substance from inorganic substances through photosynthesis. So when we talk about photosynthesis, we know that it involves plants. Yes, so this is the example. Oh, did I answer okay. it too, too fast? Okay. I can give uh, the, the chance to our friends over here. <laughs> Nisa is doing very well. Oh, thank you, okay, teacher. now consumers. Now, example heterotroph. Mm. Okay, consumers are called heterotroph. They are organisms that cannot synthesize their own food mm. but must depend on other organisms for food. Okay, look at the example over here. Now, can you tell me the primary consumer? Example but look at these pictures over here. Okay, uh, Abirami, which one is the primary consumer over here? Um, grasshopper, teacher. Grasshopper. grasshopper. Secondary consumer, Kasdina. Frog. Frog. And finally, tertiary consumer is the, who is it? Hanani? Snake. The snake. Mm. So we can see that the secondary consumer consumes the primary consumer, and the tertiary, uh, the secondary consumer will be consumed by the tertiary consumers. Now, finally, decomposers. They are microorganisms that break down complex. Okay, this is the keyword: break down complex substances such as proteins and carbohydrates in dead organisms or from waste products into simpler inorganic materials such as mushroom. All right. Okay. Next. Now, how do they interact? Now, this is what we are going to study today. Mm -hmm. Now, interactions between biotic components in terms of nutrition. How do they gain nutrition? All right, there are a few types of interaction between biotic components, such as symbiosis, saprophytism, and prey and predator. Now, symbiosis, they are divided into there are three types of interaction, such as common cellism, mutualism, and parasitism. Mm -hmm. Now, symbiosis, what is this? It is a relationship between two or more species interacting with each other for an extended period, meaning that these two species, they interact for a long time, maybe mm -hmm. throughout their lifetime. Oh. Now, there are three types of symbiotic relationships common cellism, mutualism, and parasitism. Now, common cellism is an interaction between two organisms living together where one organism benefits without, without affecting the other. Two examples are epiphytes and epizoics. Green plants, okay? Example for epiphytes, green plants that grow on other plants, grow on other plants just to gain aerial support mm -hmm. to obtain sunlight for photosynthesis. So epiphytes, they do not have strong stems to reach the height they need. So example, mm -hmm. okay, staghorn ferns, bird's nest ferns and pigeon orchids. Now these epiphytes can mm -hmm. be found in tall and sometimes even old trees. Yes. It can be hundreds of years, mm -hmm. but they love living there because over there they can get sunlight, mm -hmm. all right, for, for them to perform all photosynthesis. Right. I would like to ask our friends, are you guys follow? You guys are still okay? You guys still okay? Yes. Give me double thumbs up. <laughs> our friends at home, I know you guys are busy with your lemang and rendang, but we need to study, but we will take a break for a little bit, teacher. So I'll see you guys after this. Don't go anywhere. KPM
back to you guys at Road to Success SPM 2021. Still with me, Nisa and Cikgu Suhana. Also, our friends from SMK Convent Clan. We left you guys with one of, one of the types of the interactions, which is the symbiosis. Let's proceed with our lesson. Let's go, teacher. All right, let's continue. Mm. The other type of commensalism, which is the epizoics. Okay, just not epiphyte involved plants. Now epizoics it involves animals. animals. Now, there are animals that live on the body of other animals. Okay, without causing any disadvantage to the host. Mm -hmm. Epizoics benefit from their host in the form of transportation and maybe even food scraps. Mm -hmm. Example, a school of remora fish swim near sharks for food scraps and protection. Mm -hmm. Now, who dares to come near you when, yes. you, shark, when you swim near a shark? All right. So, and the other interaction is mutualism, which is an interaction between two organisms that benefit each other. This is very important. Benefit each other. Butterflies feed on nectar provided by the flowers, while the flowers need butterflies as pollinators. Now, over, uh, what you call that? Ox packets, this type of bird, okay, that feed on ticks that live on water buffaloes, keeping them clean. Mm -hmm. All right, so the buffaloes won't feel itchy anymore, yes. right, because ox packers will feed on the ticks at the back of mm -hmm. their neck. Next, parasitism. Okay, parasitism is an interaction between two organisms that benefit only one organism. Only one organism. There are two types of parasitism, ectoparasites and endoparasites. So what is ectoparasites? There are parasites that live on external surface of other organisms. Okay, example, mosquitoes feed on human blood and breed while human can transmit it, can be transmitted with mosquito-borne diseases such as dengue. dengue. We don't want this. Yes. Okay, another one okay, that affects our life is the endoparasite, okay, that live within the tissue of our orga other organisms. Mm -hmm. Within tissues of other organisms means that they are in our body. Example, for example, tapeworms attach themselves to the lining of the human digestive system, obtain digested food as their food source. Humans lose nutrients that they require. Mm -hmm. So we don't want this to ectoparasites and endoparasites. Okay, next, saprophytism. Now, living organisms that obtain nutrients from dead and decaying organic matter are known as saprophytes. They secrete enzymes okay, to digest dead organisms and absorb the simple nutrients produced. All right, so these are the examples, yeast, bacteria and mushrooms. Okay, prey and predator. Prey and predator interaction is a relationship whereby a species of organism hunts and eats other organism. All right, such as tigers. Okay, they are predators while deer are prey. So these predators, they have characters, mm -hmm. characteristics. Their physical characteristics are very severe. Look, they have sharp vision to identify the location of their prey, and they have sharp curved claws to grasp on their prey. And in terms of birds, they have hook beaks, mm -hmm. okay, to tear the flesh of their prey. So birds with hook beaks are meat eaters. Now, one of the uh, characters of the prey, all right, this is how they hide themselves from their predator. They rely on camouflage to confuse their predators. Next, all right, how do we estimate or how do we calculate their population? All right, now this is one of the methods, which is the quadrat sampling technique. Okay, this is a quadrat square made of wood, metal, or even strings. The size of quadrat depends on the size, density, and distribution of organism being studied. Okay, the example of one meter times one meter is placed uh, randomly in our school field to study the mimosa pudica species plant. This is one example. Okay, for us to do this in our school field. All right. Now, this is the formula for frequency, all right? 
it is a probability of obtaining a species of plants in a quadrat, the plant over here. Now, frequency also refers to the degree of dispersion, how much is it in a given area. Mm -hmm. So, frequency is a number of quadrat containing the studied species over total number of quadrat sample times with 100%. Now, density okay, means number of individuals of a species per unit area of study. All right, the formula, total number of individuals in of the species in all quadrats, mm -hmm. okay, divide with total number of quadrat sample times area of quadrats. How to do this? We will have some questions for you yes, later all on. Right. <laughs> okay, next, coverage. Mm -hmm. All right. Coverage of a species is the ground occupied by the growth of a plant species. The percentage coverage is the percentage of ground area okay, there, occupied by the plant. Percentage coverage is useful when it is too difficult to count each individual plant. Mm -hmm. For example, the grass in our school field, how to count them, mm -hmm. every root, every leaf mm -hmm. uh, is difficult so that's why we have this quadrat mm -hmm. and for every quadrat okay every single box over here we count mm -hmm. so from there we use this formula and we are able to get their percentage coverage okay this one for animals mm -hmm. all right how do we uh, uh, estimate their population this is the capture mark release and recapture technique okay to estimate the population size of mobile animals such as small mammals butterflies and birds all right so animals they move around we cannot use a uh, quadrat sample it's not mm -hmm. suitable so what do we do all right we get a specific animal sample determine and is captured all right, and then we mark them with a ring or a tag. Mm -hmm. After that, we release them okay, into the general population. And after a certain period, a second sample is recaptured and the number of marked animals is recorded. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this is the formula for the um, using the capture, mark, release and recapture technique. Okay, what do we do? First, we get number of organism in the first capture times with number of organism in the second capture divided by number of marked organisms in the second capture. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now, we are now at the questions section. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys ready? Yes. Okay, let's see. Which of the following is a biotic component? All right, I'm mm -hmm. going to ask uh, Abirami. But first, but first, Abirami, what is a biotic component before you answer? You get the answer, Abirami? Organisms that live in an ecosystem feature. Okay. Mm -hmm. Living organism. Mm -hmm. Living okay, organism. so for this question, what do you think your answer is? Mm -hmm. Can you read the first question and share with us your answer? Mic. Abirami, can you turn on your mic, please? Yes, teacher. It's A. It's A. Water? No. What a high scent. Okay, very Why good. Okay. okay. All right, next. Okay, the biotic components are made up of producers, consumers, and decomposers. Which of the following is not a producer? Okay, who's turn right now? Kasdina, what do you think? Not a producer. <coughs> not a producer. Mm -mm. Um, C. 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 Amoeba. Yes. yes. So, amoeba is a type of bac T. bacteria. Yeah, okay. Next. Which of the following symbiotic relationship is considered parasitic? This is the one that we do not want just now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, who can answer this? Okay. Who wants to answer this? Who wants to try to answer the third question? Salvina, what do you think? Uh, teacher, I think so. Blah. So it's C. 
C. C. Can you read the answers for me? Symbiotic. Selvina, can you read your answer? Um, Remora fish food. Mm -hmm. Remora fish yeah. eating food scraps from sharks. from sharks. Okay, other students, what do you think? Do you have other answers? Do you have other answers? Hanani, what do you think? Parasitic? Uh, it's A. 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 Okay, read the answer. Tick's um, feeding on a dog's blood. Tick feed, ticks feeding on a dog's blood. Let's mm. see. Okay, very good. The answer is, is A. A. Okay. Next. Now look at this plant. This is the one that loves to grow on other plants. Mm. Okay, plants that grow on other plants just to gain aerial support to obtain sunlight for photosynthesis. What is the interaction called? Who knows the answer? Who wants to try? You can raise your hand. You can raise your hand. If you know the answer. Habirami, what do you think? Can I try, teacher? Teacher, I think it's commensalism. 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 Okay. Let's see. Okay, yes, good. I was about to answer that we have the same mind, Habirami. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks. Okay, which are the examples of consumers? Consumer. So, Renusha. Renusha? Renusha, can you share consumers. with us your answer? Renusha, can you turn on your microphone? Okay, we still cannot reach her teacher. Can other friends help Renusha? Who what wants is the answer for the fifth question? Who wants to help Renusha? Marsha, do you know the answer? Is it the answer is C? Is C. C. Okay, let's try. Yeah, C. It's no, B. The answer is B. It's <coughs> Consumers are bear. living things that consume other living things. They mm. are hunters. So, owl and bears. All right? Okay. okay. Next. Ah, the diagram above mm. shows a type of interaction <coughs> okay. between biotic components in terms of nutrition. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the type of interaction, interaction? Called? called? So, we will give our friends over here some time to think about the answer of this question and our friends at home can try to answer this also. I'll see you guys after this. We will take a break for a little bit. Uh, don't go anywhere. Assalamualaikum dan selamat sejahtera. Video ini kami tujukan kepada guru-guru yang telah banyak mendidik. Kegigihanmu dalam mendidik tidak akan kami luputkan. Terima kasih, Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Bunga melati, bunga kemboja, harum wangi di ruang tamu. Jasa guru tidak kira mendidik kami tanpa cinta. Air sungai jernih sekali. Sejuk terasa di jari jemari. Tiada tu nilai jasa diberi tanpa memburu siapalah kami. Terima kasih, cikgu. Terima kasih 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 cikgu.
you guys are still watching Road to Success SPM 2021 where we are discussing some of the questions uh, for our friends over here and you guys can answer it too. You guys can go back to your lemak and rendang just in a bit. So let's answer the six questions. Who wants to try? Nani. Okay, Nani wants to try to answer. Uh, is it A, mutualism? Mutualism. A, how do you explain this? We say biotocomponents in terms of nutrition. We can see that the bird is feeding on scraps, okay, residue of the food from the mm. crocodile. So you say mutualism. Are you sure, Nani? Are you sure? Yes. Oops, sorry. My answer is B. You know, it's A. A, mutualism. I've got the wrong answer. Ah, because the um, uh, crocodile mm -hmm. gets his teeth cleaned mm -hmm. by the bird. Okay. So he doesn't have to brush his teeth. Ah. Ah, so, so it benefits uh, one both another. Area. Yes. Okay, both okay. organisms. So All right, very good, Nani. Okay, question number seven. What are the biotic components in a mangrove swamp? Okay, there are three of Who them. Who to try to answer? Okay. Give us Hence, your answer and read the, the, the answer. Can you you can raise your hand or you want what me to are call the you? biotic components in a mangrove? Okay, song? Abi is ready. Okay, Abi Rami. Abi Rami. What is your answer? Teacher, I think it's C. 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 Sunlight, tiger, and mangrove trees. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Okay, it's D. Oh, it's D. Dragonfly, snake, and mangrove trees. Okay, tigers they will have a tough time living in mangrove, oh, uh, mangrove swamp, isn't it? Okay, so be very careful, Abirami, mm -hmm. while selecting your answers. Okay, dragonfly, snakes, and mangrove trees. Snakes uh, loves a mangrove or swamp because it's very moist, right? Yes, it's full of water. Yeah. Okay, it's a swamp. Okay, now this one. The diagram above shows the ecosystem of the ocean consists of biotic and abiotic components. State one example of biotic and abiotic components that are shown in the diagram above. Mm -hmm. So before that, you have to remember, you define biotic first mm -hmm. and you have to define abiotic first. All right, then only you can answer this question. Mm -hmm. All right, so anyone? Example of bi biotic components. Okay, Renusha, is your line okay? Renusha? No. Okay. Let's see, uh, how about Who Kasdina? Who to answer what is the biotic component that you can see? One example, Kasdina, In what do you think? Um, coral. 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 Mm. Okay. Can you name another one? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Living tick. Sharks. Sharks. Okay, let's see. Okay, fish, shark, coral, seaweed. Okay, it's a type of plant that lives yes. in the ocean. As we have learned, biotic component is a living, living thing. Things. Okay, so. how about abiotic? Okay, Marsha. Who wants to state what is the abiotic components you saw in the diagram above? <coughs> Marsha, uh, would you like to try? Yes. Marsha, what do you think? Abiotic. Uh, is it water? Again? Water. 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 Can I have another example? Sunlight. 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 All right, okay. let's see. Okay, very good. Yes. Okay, water, sunlight, and even pH. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see another one. Now, based on the diagram, draw a food chain for this ecosystem. You, know, you can just mention uh, the organism involved and mm. let me know the answer. Now, who wants to tell me? What do you think? Abirami. Yes, okay. Abirami. Did you see it? Small fish. Mm -hmm. And then to shark. Okay. Seaweed, small eaten fish. by small fish, a small eaten fish eaten by the shark. shark. Okay, shark. let's see. Ah, okay, like almost complete, almost yes. complete. Okay, so you have to remember in the picture just now so there's a bigger fish. Mm -hmm. ah, the bigger fish is eaten by the shark. Yes. All right, one All mark right. for you. All right, what will happen to the population of green aquatic plants if there is a mass of fishing activities? Too much fish being caught in mm -hmm. that particular area. What will happen to the population of green aquatic plants? Who wants to try this one? Nani, what do you think? Uh, the population of green aquatic plants is, uh, will, will increase. Will mm -hmm. increase. 
Okay, it okay. will increase. All right. Now, one reason. You want to continue to this one, Nani? Can we uh, give you the yes. reason to your answer? Uh, what is your reason? Because uh, there will be a decrease in fish population uh -huh. due to massive uh, fishing activity. Mm. Okay, you say that the fish, okay, uh, there is no more, no more fish to eat the mm. uh, aquatic plants. Okay, yes. so you say decrease in fish population due to massive fishing with activities. So there will be no fish to consume the green aquatic plants. Mm -hmm. so that's why the uh, population of green aquatic plants Increase. increases. Mm -hmm. Next. Okay, human activities have destroyed the ecosystem of the marine park. How can we protect this ecosystem from further damage? Okay. No. Who can give your answer? Okay, Marsha. Try? Maybe we can stop the fishing activities. Mm -hmm. Stop the fishing activities. What to do then? We cannot have fish. Mm, how can ah. we eat fish? I love ah. fish. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Would you, would you like to elaborate more on that? Stop, or you want to say to control? Mm -hmm. That's what you meant. Control, yes, do not catch so much. Yeah. Uh, you're only allowed to catch fish at this certain area of yes, the ocean we cannot, only. Uh, we cannot do the activities of uh, fishing excessively. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. excessively on certain areas that um, is gazetted for fish breeding areas. Mm -hmm. So we can say that by enforcing a strict law to those who destroy the ecosystem of the marine park, uh, mm -hmm. okay, such as going to jail, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Or a very large amount of fine. Fine, mm -hmm. yes, you're afraid of that. Now, mm -hmm. number eight, the table shows the result of a study on the population of garden snails mm -hmm. in a vegetable farm. Now, this is the, um, the data. What is the estimated population size of the garden snails? Now, you have this formula. You have your calculator ready. Mm -hmm. Now, calculate. Come on, everyone. Number of organisms in first sample. Mm -hmm. times with number of organisms in the second sample over number of mark organisms recaptured. Definitely they will get the answer faster than mine because I don't have my Cal calculator, calculator <laughs> right now, but it's okay. I will try my best. 200. Anyone got the answer already? Yes, Marsha. Marsha got the answer. Can you share with us your answer? Uh, is it 520? 520, let's okay, see. Let's see. Oh, very good. Yes, ah. okay, can you explain to me what do you put here? Number of organism in a first sample. What do you put here? In the first sample, it shows uh, 200. Okay, 200. and then? This one, don't have? Yeah. Don't have, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Over number of Over. mark. Mm. Over 50. So that means 200, open bracket, 80 mm -hmm. plus 50, and over 50, then you get... Okay, this one is 80 plus 50, mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, this one, over number of organism recaptured is how many? Uh, 520. Uh, no, no, this one, number of my organism recaptured? Uh, 50. 50. 50, okay, so we get 5 to 0. Okay, yes, next. You got the answer correct. Okay. okay. So far, we have learned about uh, Chapter 2 of Form 4's uh, textbook, uh, page 22. You can also uh, go back and do some revision on this topic. Uh, what we have learned for today, we have learned about dynamic ecosystems, biotic and abiotic components, a little bit about types of interaction and population ecology. So, teacher, what can you conclude from our today's lesson? All right. Uh, additional science is not that hard to study, mm -hmm. okay? So just focus and uh, do your exercises, all right? Look for sample questions and there are a lot of things for you to study from the internet. Mm -hmm. Now we have a lot in uh, YouTube yes. and also some university students, they do their research papers mm -hmm. and so on. But if um, you focus on the topics, all right, you are able to nail it. Yes, mm. so do a lot of exercises, revision, and it's okay to make mistakes if you don't understand on some 
certain topics or questions, you can always go to your teachers and ask them. Okay, thank you so much everybody for being here with us. I would like to go back to my rendang and lemang. Uh, thank you, Cikgu Sohana. And also our friends from SMK Convent Klang. Thank you so much for those who have been watching us from the start until now. I guess I'll bid you goodbye by now, uh, for now. Bye, I'll see you again. Bye. Everybody, bye. KPM